In this video we'll look at paths and adding decorations to paths and a couple of boxes that we might want to draw within a picture in ticks within our LaTeX document. So to illustrate this we'll begin with our base document where we've got a background grid running from 0, -0 to 66 with grid lines that are light grey every half a centimetre in both the horizontal and vertical direction. So first up let's demonstrate drawing a path between different points. We start off with the draw command, so if we start in the bottom left at 0, 0, let's say we shift across 3 units to 3 naught, then we want to go up at that point by 3 units, then we can take a look at we've got our two line segments. So what we might want to do is to change the colour of these line segments to make it blue. So we look again at that and we notice that the whole of the line is drawn in blue. So if we wanted to add another bit, say moving across a red line from our 3 3 westwards to 3 naught, sorry to naught 3, then we'd need to add that on a separate line for us to have a different colour for the line segment. So next we might want to change something to do with the individual lines. So let's close off the box so it goes from 0, 3 back to 0, 0 but make this particular segment black. So now we've got three different line segments. Let's say we want to change the type of line that's used on each one. So let's say first up the blue line, let's make that thin so it's different strength to the others. We'll make the red line thick and we'll leave the black line at its original weight. So we can see if we zoom in a bit we should have different thicknesses of the different line segments. So I'll just make that very thick to hopefully make that slightly clearer on the diagram. So you can see it's shifted off because it's been made larger. So then what we might want to do is rather than having the thickness, so let's get rid of some of these and just make them lines between two points that are horizontal. So let's get it to stretch across the whole part from 0 to 6 and we'll have a couple more of those up at different heights on our graph. So now let's say we want to have our solid line, a dashed line and a dotted line and then the last bit we'll just have a variant on one of those where we have a, um, a dash dotted line. So we'll run that. There are plenty of other options that we could have. So we'll just check here. It doesn't actually know about the dash dotted option. So we'll just get rid of that line. or we'll leave that as solid to start off with. So we will just take a look at our separate lines. So we can see that we've got different designs on these ones. So now what we could do is change the different ends so we can have arrowheads. So we've got this dash and anything to the left of that is the start of the line, to the right of that the end of the line. So if we want to end off our line just with a simple arrow, we can add that at the end and we will just zoom in on our graph. Just need to run that again and we'll see that we've got an arrowhead at the end of there. Let's say we wanted the arrowhead at the other end of the line. So we have our less than sign. And then we could end up with an arrow at both ends if we write something like this. So now you see it's at the left end and the right end. And we could have something a little bit more complicated if we want a vertical line at each end followed by the arrow head. So the vertical line is on the outside of those. And there are a number of different variants that we can look at in here. So let's say we wanted to put a box with some text in there that's sort of slightly fancy. We can make use of the node command here. So let's say we want to have a blue outline to our box, but we want to have the fill in as a red color that's 40% red and we want ultra thick outline and we want it to be in a rectangle and as well as that maybe we want to have rounded corners around the box so then we just put in some text here so we'll just say example and that should default to appearing at naught naught so we'll just check what's complaining about here if we've got a semicolon yep so the node line has to finish with a semicolon 
we'll just run that through we'll now see we've got this rather odd looking box here what we could do is then add some separation so inner sap will allow us to push things out and have a bit of padding around there so we run that through and we can now see we've got a bit more space around the outside so then let's say we want to put a title on this box well what we can do is first up we need to give our box a label so the B1 allows us to refer to that box in future to do some relative positioning so let's say we want a title which again has got a blue outline and a red inside bit but here we want to have blue text rather than black text and then what we can say is we want it to be relative to our box B1 at the northwest corner of that box and we'll just call that a title remember to end with a semicolon so we run that and then view it so now you can see we've got this slightly odd title in the corner so let's say we want to push that across or in fact center it so rather than having northwest we should be able to replace that with north and now you'll see it's put the title in the middle of there now of course there are plenty of other things that we can do as these are two nodes you can put a wide variety of formatting on each of those parts